This is Bill at Highland Hill Farm. We own a number of properties throughout the nation where we do allow access for people to hunt, to fish, for uh, you know, to watch for birds, to hunt for dinosaur bones, Indian artifacts. We have we have our properties pretty much open to the public, but we do charge an access fee. And today I want to talk to you about an access fee that you should be requiring when people use your property. For example, many times the Fish and Wildlife Service or a Game Commission will come to us and want access to our property to do a study. Well, let me tell you something. Just as you would never allow a police officer to search your house without a warrant or search your vehicle without a warrant or probable cause, you should never let a federal or state official on, the, on your property unless it's actually in your benefit. And I say that because there are times when they can come on and it is in your benefit. For example, I'm in the nursery business and when I get inspected for my trees and shrubs, it's in my benefit that if I have a pathogen on my premises, I want it taken care of and I want to make sure that I don't spread pathogens. But when they, the government comes to you to search for something like the swift fox on ranches or farms that we own in Montana or New Mexico, I always, always, always find a way to politely deny access. And I do that this way. I, I explain to the person that's asking for permission, we have no problem with you coming on, but we want to treat you equally. You know, when other people come on our premises and use it for, for purposes of recreation or to view wildlife or to go hunting or to camp or fish, we charge. We charge an access fee. If the government wants access to our premises, you just have to pay an access fee. And we don't even want the money to come to us. We, we usually tell them that it goes to a college or a university or, or some nonprofit. So that, you know, it isn't like we're benefiting from the government coming on, but we're making it that they have to actually pay to play. Now, the, the reason we do that is we know they'll never want to pay to play. The government never is going to want to go and start the, down the process in the road where landowners charge them in order for the government to come on and you know keep account of how many eagles how many snail darters there are how many how many box turtles there are or how many swamp bog turtles there, that may be in your swamp they'll never want to pay for access they're going to want it for free because once they start down that road of having to pay to enter on private property that's a bad road for the government they don't want that they want free access like you're going to give them access i don't give them anything i don't give them one square inch i don't give them any kind of access unless i really think that's beneficial to me to have them there. The thickets provide shelter and food for a variety of wildlife species. A well-designed thicket will provide food sources, nesting sites, and protection from snow, ice, and predators. Thickets can be part of a restoration plan used to stabilize a stream bank or used to address an erosion problem. These plantings can also provide other benefits to landowners such as a sight and sound barrier or as a windbreak. This video is about a plant we recommend for use in establishing a thicket. This video is brought to you by Highland Hill Farm. We grow and sell screening and buffering trees for privacy and sound barriers.